Hello everyone, in this video, I will be talking about fluorescence microscopy techniques. First, let's start with fluorescence phenomenon, which is the principle of the techniques. Everything starts with substances called fluorophores. These substances can absorb short wavelength light with high energy, and its electrons can jump to excited states. When these electrons go back to the ground state, it emits long wavelength light with lower energy. In other words, the lights coming in and out full of four have different color and energy. In this picture, quinine in tonic water is a fluorophore that absorbs UV light and emits blue light. Each fluorophore absorbs and emits light with certain wavelengths. We can measure the spectrum of these lights, which call the excitation maximum and the emission maximum. At this wavelength, the substance absorb and emit the best. In the example of quinine, the excitation maximum is 350 nanometer, which is ultraviolet light, and the emission maximum is about 450 nanometer, which is blue light. The length between this value is called stock shift of the fluorophore. The emitted light often have high contrast, especially in dark background. Okay, after we all understand the principle of the techniques, let's move to the technique itself. It utilizes the high contrast image made by fluorescence to study organic and inorganic substances. This technique is widely used in microbiology to analyze cells, cells organelles, and proteins. It provides images with high contrast. The background is often absent or black, so we can see the desired target clearly. It works with high specificity. There are fluorescence labels that can attach to specific objects for analysis. And finally, it allows us to do live cell imaging, for example, in the division of cells. Therefore, this is a useful tool in live cell study. This is a picture of a real fluorescence microscope and its components. However, it will be very complicated to explain everything, so in this video, I will go into detail on the main components only. The first component is a light source. The light will reach an excitation filter. As I have mentioned before, different fluorophores need to be excited by light in different wavelengths. The excitation filter will absorb all the wavelengths and only let the wavelength of interest get through. Therefore, the filter needs to be chosen depending on the fluorophore that we are using. After that, the light will reflect on a beam slitting mirror before reaching the specimen. The fluorescence effect happens here and the specimen emits light with longer wavelength and lower energy. This emitted light will be filtered again by an emission filter and reach a detector, which can be either human eyes or a digital camera. So, how does this technique work? Basically, there are two main steps. First, label the study target by attaching fluorescent mark to it. The study subject can either be a protein or a part of a cell or even a whole cell. There are different kinds of fluorophore mark, which can specifically attach to different parts of cells. Or we can even make the fluorophore attached to DNA and it can duplicate itself when the cell duplicate. Secondly, Analyze the subject under a fluorescence microscope, as explained previously, by beaming the specimen with light with appropriate wavelength, the label can express the fluorescence effect and become clearly visible. Using this label, we can detect where the subject is and how it acts. Nowadays, the technique is being developed progressively. For example, it can take multiple pictures of specimen and put the pictures together to form a movie. Or we can label multiple parts of cell with different marks and observe them at the same time. To do that, we need to have a microscope with a multi-band pass filters and a filter wheels. The filter wheels will move in a certain speed and hence changing the filter. We can collect individual image of individual fluorophore continuously. These images are later put together to make a full image or video of all the fluorophores. 
In this video, we have learned about the fluorescence microscopy technique, its principle, the basic structure of a fluorescence microscope, and how it works. This technique is a great tool in biology and medical science, and is a highly competitive technique for studying cells and other organic and inorganic substances. This is the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it and gained additional knowledge about fluorescence microscopy techniques.